Showing on this episode of Law Weekly highlights from the official commissioning of the body of benches complex in Abuja. President Mohamedou Buhari challenges the judiciary to remain fair, especially as the 2023 general elections approaches. Also showing on the program highlights from the new legal year ceremony of the Lagos judiciary. The chief judge of Lagos gives the assurance that the ICT machinery in the state will be revved up. We also hear from lawyers on their expectations for the new legal year, plus a recap of the top trending legal stories in the news. Hello and welcome to Law Weekly. I'm Shola Shieli. The president has restated his administration's commitment to upholding the rule of law and improving the well-being of judicial officers. He made this commitment at the official commissioning of the body of benches complex in Abuja. Here's the highlights from that event. Gathered here at the commissioning of the body of benches complex in Abuja are eminent personalities cutting across the legal, executive and judicial sector. The arrival of President Muhammadu Buhari kickstarts the commissioning and straight away he performs the ceremony. The chief host, the chairman of the body of benches, Chief Wale Olanikwekun takes his guests down memory lane. He describes the edifice as a national monument and explains the importance of the event to the future of the legal profession while commending the efforts of the body of benches for their doggedness and sacrifice. Today's event represents our onward journey to a society that centralizes the power and privileges inherent in the rule of law and a reaffirmation of our cooperative steadfastness to the ever-abiding credence of institutional continuity and sustainability. I stand here on behalf of the body of benches to applaud the tenaciousness of purpose, the potency of a mutual allegiance, and an unswerving audacity with this back to several decades. The benches complex which had just been commissioned by Mr. President, is but part of a unique blend of aspirations, which took root exactly 30 years ago. The idea of a benchance complex was mooted in 1992, when Shibankale Oki, senior advocate of Nigeria, was chairman of the body of benches. The turning of the sword and groundbreaking ceremony was performed exactly on 28th November 2008. Construction work commenced in earnest, and the ultimate result is this magnificent and defeating project. So much time, talents, and treasures have been invested into this edifice. And when I recall the very stretch of sacrifices made to the realization of this unique facility, which is a national monument. My reaction is best captured in the words of the world acclaimed board, William Shakespeare, when he said, I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks, and ever thanks. He also reiterated the need for the independence of the judiciary. This benchance complex, Mr. President, consists of a 3,000 seating capacity auditorium a 240 seating capacity meeting room, a 1,000 seating capacity banquet hall, a 1,000 capacity multipurpose hall, committee meeting room, offices for secretarial staff, library, and a courtroom for the legal practitioners disciplinary committee, amongst others. I say to God be the glory. Mr. President, sir, this unique occasion affords me a golden privilege to reiterate our earlier calls for a more virile and independent judiciary. There's no gain saying the fact that our constitution thrives on the doctrine of separation of powers, ever propounded by the French political philosopher Baron de Montesco since 1748. Mr. President, we we'll recall that during the body of benchance meeting with Your Excellency on 28 July 2022, I stated that following pressing and incessant complaints of poor conditions of service by judicial officers across the country, the body of benchance was compelled to set up a standing committee known 
as the body of Benchal's Judiciary Advisory Committee. The fundamental function of this committee is to constantly interface with members of the bench in order to take their concerns and frustrations up with the appropriate authorities. Also critical to its mandate is the task of comparing packages made available to judicial officers in other jurisdictions. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ulukaide Ariwola, expressed his joy at the completion of the building. I'm aware of the efforts made by present and past chairmen of the body of benches to see to the realization of this project. And I'm excited that what started several years ago has today become a reality. I commend sincerely the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, as well as the body of benchers for this laudable project. The realization of this dream is indeed a big boost to the entire legal profession in Nigeria. The monument will no doubt change the landscape and ease the call to bar ceremonies and other very important activities of the body of benchers, and indeed, that of the entire legal profession. Our expectation, therefore, is very high that this gigantic edifice will be put to good use. No doubt, with the complex of this project and the completion of same, the challenges, of, the challenges faced in time past in securing a befitting venue for the call to bar ceremonies will become a thing of the past. I therefore congratulate the body of benchers on this auspicious occasion, and I thank God Almighty for making it possible. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, spoke of the significance of the edifice to the judiciary and implored that it be properly maintained. Let me be categorical in stating that the significance of today's ceremony transcends the physical commissioning ceremony of this unique edifice. This event further engraves the august body of benches in our consciousness as legal practitioners. It equally serves as a mark of our common commitment to creating an enabling environment for the advancement of the course of administration of justice and entrenchment of the rule of law in Nigeria. It is equally pertinent for me to strongly congratulate the past and present leadership of the body of benches on the critical attainment of commencing and completing this Nobel addition to the infrastructural landscape of the nation's capital. I implore the management of the body of benches to ensure that this edifice receive due and prompt maintenance services while also expressing the confidence that the resources in the complex will contribute greatly to the development of legal education and sustenance of ethical standards in the legal profession. Speaking at the event, President Muhammadu Buhari appreciated the efforts that have gone into the completion of the building. He also restates his administration's commitment to improving the welfare of judges. This is a major achievement for the body of benches, as this structure serves to boost infrastructural development of the legal profession. I commend the efforts of the entire body of benches for being able to deliver this project which I have been told was embarked on in 2008 and has only now been fully completed. From the information available to me, meetings of the body of benches were hitherto held at the Supreme Court premises, both in Lagos and Abuja. Now the body has its own beautiful complex. 
which will serve for its meetings, seminars, conferences, and also bring some revenue to its coffers. The president further reiterated the major role the judiciary should play in ensuring the fairness and sanctity of the 2023 general elections. For Nigeria to effectively embrace sustainable development, institutions such as the legal profession must remain deeply committed towards promoting good governance. As the 2023 general elections draw near, the significance of the legal profession becomes even more pronounced considering the vital roles you play in the electioneering process, both at the free and post-election stages. I hope you maintain the position of an honest arbiter. The newly completed building was conceived 30 years ago. It consists of a 3,000 capacity auditorium, meeting rooms, a banquet hall, a multi-purpose hall, a library, courtrooms, amongst others. It is indeed another milestone for the legal profession and the expectation is that this edifice would be effectively utilized and maintained. Away from that event, the Lagos State Judiciary has held Thanksgiving services to kickstart the commencement of its new legal year. The simultaneous Thanksgiving services were held at the Cathedral Church of Christ, Marina, and the Central Mosque, both on Lagos Island. The Chief Judge of Lagos, Justice Kazim Alugba, leads other judges, magistrates, lawyers of the Muslim faith and their invited guests into the mosques for prayers. And after prayers, the gathering listened to different speakers who encouraged the judicial officers to continue to deliver justice without fear or favor. The Chief Judge used the opportunity of the celebration to appeal to the State Governor who was represented by his deputy to prioritize the reconstruction of the burnt Igbushiri High Court. The Igbushiri Court was burnt down in October 2020 following the hijack of the NSARS protests by hoodlums. Justice Alugba lamented the destruction of the court, noting that it was a monumental edifice that must be revived. The Deputy Governor, Dr. Bafemi Hamzat, explained that a trust fund had been set up to rebuild public structures destroyed during the violent protest. He promised that the reconstruction of the Igbushiri High Court complex will be the first with the fund. <laughs> At the Cathedral Church of Christ, Marina, judges, magistrates and lawyers of the Christian faith also danced and sang in praises to God for the commencement of a new legal year. The Bishop of the Diocese of Lagos West Anglican Communion, the Reverend Ulushala Odedeji, in his sermon encouraged the Lagos State Judiciary to uphold truth and justice at all times. And after the Thanksgiving services, proceedings moved to the main arena of the Tafa Balewa Square, where the Chief Judge inspected the ceremonial guard of honor as part of activities to mark the commencement of the new legal year. In his interview with Law Weekly, the Chief Judge spoke more about the impact of the burnt court building on the judiciary. Honestly, anybody who knew that edifice will know that we, we have lost something that is irreplaceable. We can only copy what's, what was there. We cannot put exactly what was there back then. And then a lot of suffering that the judiciary has had to go through as a result of losing that place. You can imagine a complex that, that, that owes um, about 40 something courts losing such a place. You just need to know what we've gone through. The CJ also gave the assurance that the judiciary will rev up its use of technology in the new legal year. We hope we'll have the funds, but we are committed to it. It's irreversible. That's one of the things. The legacy I would like to leave behind when I'm leaving the judiciary. My first day when I was appointed and confirmed, I did say that I would love a judiciary. We had your records, the records of every case from day one to the last day. You can just take, uh, what do you call it, uh, a, a small, um, uh, what do you call it, like a disc. It's not this, uh, the flash drive. You just take a flash drive of it and you are holding the entirety of your case up to judgment. That's what I dream of. That's what we are working towards. And I know by the grace of God we should be able to achieve it. Legal practitioners have been speaking about the challenges confronting the judiciary 
and their expectations for the new legal year. We have the views of a few of them up next. Inadequate funding of the judiciary, congestion in courts, lack of infrastructure. You have so many of them. You recall that the president or the new CJN has set up a new agenda. And by that new agenda, everybody is hopeful that a lot of all the issues that have plagued the judiciary before now will be addressed. If you look at the salary of a judge today, <laughs> for the state I court, maybe about 500,000 naira. And for the federal I court, maybe 600,000 naira. Convert that to dollar. Because they go to the same market. And then you will be able to appreciate the problem besetting that sector. The challenge that I always see has always been one and the same. You know, the um, backlogs in court, having your matter in court, your matters in court for, for forever, which is um, no fault of anybody probably because of um, uh, numbers of um, judges that we have. So we feel that there should be mechanisms. There should be more, there should be increase in the numbers of the people that sit on that bench so that we can, so that we can have all matters settled expeditiously. Of course, lawyers will also help in this kind of issue because uh, they will also help in this kind of matter by not filing frivolous applications and not unnecessarily dragging matters in court so that we can have all matters settled expeditiously. Our courts uh, especially has been uh, on the reconstruction and uh, it's made uh, um, uh, procedures to be a bit tight and we believe that uh, well this legal year we have uh, just commenced that uh, those structures especially especially the structures our high court at Iboshe right there the magistrate courts you know uh, they are still after the answers saga and all that. Uh, so I believe that, especially because it has made us, most of our cases are all scattered to other courts. Uh, so this year, we believe that those things will be put in place. Our judges are trying because it's made uh, them to have a lot to do. I would want to see that the judiciary increases its effort in seeing that the time spent from the time spent in court when matters make it to court is shorter. I mean, if a matter can be resolved in a year or a couple of months, why take five years? Also, in this era, COVID has taught us a number of things. COVID had its own uh, bad sides and good sides. But of the good sides of COVID is that People can be in the comfort of their homes or offices or wherever they are and they can access the internet and have matters resolved. I honestly do think that except for matters of very serious nature, where you have very contentious applications or matters that are for trial, lawyers really don't need to go to court physically for every matter. Some of the matters that go to court are time sensitive because they are commercial matters. Some of these matters have a lifespan naturally in line with the business that parties are to do, maybe six months or nine months. It serves, it doesn't serve the parties any good. For a matter, I mean, a project that is to be executed within a year, but the dispute arising from that project is spanning to six, seven years. It's no longer serving anybody any good. And when, when things continue to happen this way, the, 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 the public confidence in the court system becomes eroded and once that happens and it's already happening informally it's already happening where people no longer want to resort to court for settlement of, uh, of, of uh, disputes and all god forbid that that day will come when uh, uh, the citizens will shun the court on the home stretch let's bring you a recap of some of the top legal stories in the news.
We begin with the report that the Supreme Court has finally laid to rest the controversy surrounding the July the 16th People's Democratic Party governorship primary election as the court upheld the candidature of the Oshun governor-elect, Senator Adimola Adeleke. The court dismissed the suit instituted by Mr. Dotsun Babayemi, a former governorship candidate of the party in the state. The five-man panel led by Justice Amina Augi gave the judgment on the grounds that the court lacked the jurisdiction to entertain the appeal as the plaintiff filed it out of time. From the Apex Court, we move to the National Industrial Court in Abuja, which has struck out a suit instituted by the President of the National Association of Nigerian Students, Umar Farouk Lawal, asking the Academic Staff Union of Universities to call off their seven-month-old strike and return to school. Lowell had instituted the case on behalf of himself and the student body. Justice Polycap Hammond struck out the suit after Lowell's counsel, Deboy Kueson, withdrew the suit on the grounds that the student body is challenging his position as president of the association. Staying in Abuja, but this time with the Federal High Court, Justice Ahmed Mohammed has ordered the arrest of a British national, James Nolan, for jumping bail and failing to appear for trial. Nolan, a director in the Process and Industrial Development Limited, PNID, is standing trial alongside Lurgi Consult Limited and others in a money laundering case to the tune of $9.6 billion. At the Federal High Court in Damaturu, Yobe State, Justice Fadimatu Muritala has declared Bashir Machina as the rightful candidate for Yobe North Senatorial District under the party of the All Progressives Congress. The judge held that the purported primary election set to have held on June the 9th, 2022 and won by the President of the Senate, Hamid Lawan, was invalid. Justice Muritala also ordered the party and INEC to recognize Machina as the authentic candidate and winner of the primary election. From Yobe, we move to the Federal High Court, Lagos, where Justice Daniel Osiago has permitted the Labour Party and its supporters to hold its Obidati 23 Forward Ever Rally on October the 1st, but ruled against their convergence at the Lekki Toll Gate. The court also directed the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, and the Lagos State Police Commissioner, Abiodun Labi, to ensure compliance with the order. The court made the order while ruling on a motion for injunction brought by 10 plaintiffs who are asking the court to, among other things, restrain the Labour Party, its presidential candidate, Pito B, his running mate, Dati Baba Ahmed, chairman of the party, Julius Aburi, and their loyalists from holding the rally. And we round up with the report that the trial of Andrew Nice or Mini Coron a BRT driver who allegedly raped and murdered a 22-year-old fashion designer, Uluaba Mishé Anyawola, has continued at the Lagos High Court sitting at the Tafa Balewa Square. The court listened to the testimonies of two witnesses, the deceased brother, Abegude Anyawola, and a bank official. The deceased brother narrated the search process for the deceased, the discovery of her death, and why he points fingers at the defendant. And this is where we are joined till next week. Don't forget that you can find this episode of the program and past episodes on our YouTube channel. After viewing, be sure to leave us a feedback. I'm Shola Shirley. Thank you for watching and see you next week.